welcome back. This is MPP number 39. Thank you, producer Alfie. And uh, today I'm really honored to have a cu couple of uh, younger guys, although one's not so young, um, here. Um, we have Dr. Farouk, who is at Loyola, and he's the head of the men's health division of their urologic department. And I, when I say a men's health division, I mean a real men's health type of practice, you know, st starting from, you know, radical prostatectomies all the way down to the basic stuff like hormone replacement therapy. We have Dr. Mann, who was his fellow up until, what, no, actually got two more weeks to go. Mm -hmm. And then he's off to work with a very good friend of mine, Dino T Tortorellis, who is up in Minneapolis. And, <laughs> and that's going to be one hell of a practice when it comes to penile implants for sure. And so... It, it, what's what's great is we have here between all of us three three urologists that have been experienced in both penis scrotal and infrapubic, and so I, I want to take you know I'm the old man, so we're gonna <laughs> pass this off to you. You've been you've had the, your practice now at uh, Loyola eight, eight, for eight, eight years. years, yeah. So he's had eight years of experience. Some I, you started with penis scrotal and then yes. moved on to infrapubic, yes. and you've learned from two different people. Um, actually, more people because you've gone around the country. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the approaches, and, and and we're not here to sell you on something. I want you to, to sort of hear what what evolved in their minds as they they made their decision on what they want to do for their their patients. So I think we should start with with you, Dr. Fruit, because you know you you've been teaching now eight eight you know years of of, of residence. And I'm sure some of them are wondering why, you know, that you, you chose a you know, penis scrotal in the beginning and then went in for pubic. So yeah. if you can enlighten us on that. Sure. So, you know, you always want to do better for your patients. And once I was very comfortable doing the penis scrotal approach, I wanted to see how I can get these patients to start using their device better, get comfortable better. And once I heard about the infrapubic approach, I learned about it. And this is obviously my opinion. But I, I, I really felt that the uh, recovery was quicker, uh, pain control was more manageable, and uh, the, the overall scrotal swelling and healing was, 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 was better on these patients. So I adapted it. I started selecting patients selectively to do this first on virgin cases, and now I'm doing them on, um, on redos and, um, and teaching the residents and fellows and, and really having good outcomes. And the patients are happy. They have smaller incisions. They have, you know, quicker to using the device after a couple of weeks and, um, you know, have just had good, better outcomes than for, for, for my opinion. So, so the one thing I'd like to, to focus on is a couple of weeks. I mean, we have guys that are having sex two weeks, three weeks after surgery. And it, it's because we've adopted the infrapubic approach. So now you, as somebody who's coming out and you're about mm -hmm. to start your own private practice and you've watched some great penis scrotal surgeons, some great infrapubic surgeons, but let's talk about your decision-making and where you're going to go. And we, mm -hmm. uh, I really don't know the answer to this question right now because we're- It'd be a surprise for everyone. Okay, yeah. so it'd be a surprise for all of us. All right. uh, well, you're absolutely right. I've had a great opportunity to work some, with some really talented surgeons, both in the penis scrotal side of things and the infrapubic side of things. Um, initially, during my training, it was 100% penis scrotal. And I always felt it was like kind of the threesome from hell. You're at a pool party, you don't want your uh, neighbors start coming down, but you know, here are these two twins trying to sneak their way into the party. <laughs> so trying to get those balls out of the way is always like the worst part about the penis scrotal. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, coming down here, learning from you, again, that, you know, Pareto minimally invasive technique. You're working with the penis. Penis is supposed to be your friend, you know. We're all here for that little guy. Big guy for most of you. Um, but working in line, working within the axis of the penis is something that the infrapubic gives you where the penis scrotal, you're, it's an unnatural movement. So for my own practice, it's gonna be 99% uh, infrapubic. Maybe if there's some you know unforeseeable reason why I can't go there, I'll go back to the scrotum, but I'm an infrapubic guy now. All right, all right so. I didn't pay these guys to say this, and we all, all three of us believe that the infrapubic approach is very patient friendly. Some people might say, I mean, you're one of the first persons that have said that it's also surgeon friendly. A lot of them say it's said that the infrapubic approach is not quite so surgeon friendly. But I, I really believe that, that what all three of us are trying to tell you right now is it is the most friendly 
to, towards the patient approach for doing a penile prosthesis. So I wish you amazing luck in your future working with Dino. And I know that you know, hopefully uh, our, our, our department and his, his uh, department will get together and we're going to be able to give you some more things that we can do to make your recovery and return to sexual function even faster than it is right now. So we'll see you for MTP number 40. We're going to make that a special one too. Thanks.